Welcome back, Night Owls! And tonight, we're solving the particular problem of how to find the arc length of a portion of a parabola. That is, if we have a curve, obviously the whole parabola has infinite length. But what if we're only focused on the portion of a parabola that goes from some point to some other point? So, suppose that a rope hangs in the shape of a parabola, y equals x squared. And suppose we're interested in the portion that goes from x equals negative 3 to x equals positive 3. So that would be the point negative 3 comma 9 to positive 3 comma 9. And the question is, how long is the rope? So, before we begin, obviously uh, we could get a lower bound for the length of the rope by just connecting it in a straight diagonal line downward and then a straight diagonal line upward. Uh, the, the, the diagonal line downward would be 3 times square root of 10 if you do Pythagorean theorem on it. Uh, diagonal line up would also be 3 times square root of 10. Uh, you get that those combined to be 6 square root of 10, or a little more than 18, right? Obviously, so it's got to be bigger than that. Also, it's going to be smaller than just going straight down, straight across, and straight up. To go straight down and straight up, uh, that's going to be 9 either way. Straight across will get you a 6. So 9 plus 9 plus 6 is 24. So we're looking for some number between 18 and 24, but we need to know exactly what it is. Uh, and so the key here is as we integrate along x, or as x goes from negative 3 to 3, we want to know not how much vertical uh, length we have being added up to get us an area, right? That would be the area under the curve. To get the area, uh, to get this arc length, we are looking at adding up the tiny little infinitely small pieces of arc length, or these differential arc lengths. As you move forward by some dx, your y will uh, increase or decrease by some dy. And we have to figure out the relationship between dy and dx. Fortunately, that's, uh, dy over dx is just going to be the derivative, the slope. Since we're given y equals x squared, then the derivative is just going to be 2x. So, if our horizontal change is some dx, our vertical change is going to be 2x times dx. Then, by Pythagorean theorem, we'll get that this diagonal length will be square root of dx plus 2x dx quantity squared. Doing the math there, we get that our total length here will be the integral from x equals negative 3 to x equals positive 3 of square root of 1 plus 4x squared all dx. And now the annoying part is figuring out how do you integrate this annoying square root function. And we do it with some algebraic trickery here. We let x equal 1 half tan theta. And the purpose of doing that is using a trig substitution we will ultimately be able to get rid of this annoying square root. If we let x equals 1 half tan theta, then 4x squared becomes uh, tan squared theta, right? 1 half tan theta quantity squared is 1 quarter tan squared theta, times this 4 becomes tan squared theta. 1 plus tan squared theta equals secant squared theta. And square root of secant squared theta is just secant theta. Meanwhile, we have x equals 1 half tan theta, dx equals 1 half secant squared theta d theta. Uh, then, whenever we do its substitution, we have to change our bounds from being in terms of x to being in terms of whatever our new variable is. If we're integrating with respect to theta, that means changing from uh, x to theta. So theta equals inverse tangent of 2x, right? It's x equals 1 half tan theta multiplied by 2. 2x two equals tan theta, inverse tan of both sides. Theta equals inverse tan of 2x. So we get our length integral equals integral from inverse tan of negative 6 to inverse tan of positive 6 of 1 half square root of 1 plus tan squared secant squared theta d theta, which, as I mentioned, is going to be integral of square root of secant squared theta times secant squared theta d theta, right? This 1 plus tan squared equals secant squared. And we can undo the squaring and the square root with just secant theta. Uh, one other technicality that I should bring up for completeness uh, in general, when I take when I square something and then take the square root, I actually get the absolute value of what I started with, not just what I started with, right? If I if I square negative three, that gets me nine. If I take the square root of nine, that gets me three. Three is not negative three. Three is the absolute value of negative three. But we don't have to worry about that absolute value stuff here because 
since we are taking an inverse tangent of stuff, inverse tangent always gets you an angle between uh, in either quadrant one or quadrant four. And in quadrant one and quadrant four, uh, the cosine is positive, so secant, which is one divided by cosine, is also positive. Absolute value of a positive number is just itself, so we don't have to worry about that absolute value nonsense. So this gets us one half integral secant cubed theta d theta. The next trickery we need to use is figure out how to anti-differentiate secant cubed. And what we do here, I know this is a lot to look at right now. Don't worry, I'll walk you through this. Uh, you say integral of secant cubed equals integral of secant times secant squared. We actually break it apart. So that then, if you're familiar with integration by parts, then you'll think there's probably a shorter version of getting what I'm about to get. I'm not assuming that all of my viewers are familiar with integration by parts just yet, so bear with me for this explanation right here. Uh, I'm going to assume that this secant times secant squared, notice that's a product of two functions, I'm going to assume that that forms one half of the derivative of a product rule. We remember that a product rule derivative is fg prime plus gf prime. So since I know secant squared is a nice convenient derivative, it's the derivative of tangent, I will assume that I already have an fg prime, I need to put in the corresponding gf prime. Uh, so then my g is a tangent, my f prime, if f is secant, uh, my uh, f prime will be secant tangent, so I get this is integral of secant times secant squared plus secant times tan times tan minus secant times tan times tan d theta, where I'm just adding and subtracting the missing part for completing the product rule. I'm adding and subtracting the missing part. That, that's part of where this, or that, that's where this uh, technique got its name from, integration by parts. So I look at these first two terms. I know I, I engineered it to be a perfect product rule. So I know that if I anti-differentiate this, it's just going to be secant times tangent. Notice, derivative of secant times tangent is going to be this product rule mass. Then I just have to subtract out this remaining piece, integral from uh, inverse tan negative 6 to inverse tan of 6 of secant theta tan theta tan theta, or secant theta tan squared theta. Now I use that trig identity again. Right? If tan squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta, then tan squared theta equals secant squared theta minus 1. So that's the substitution I make. Right? This next part, it, it, this carries over. I just make the substitution. Distribute this secant theta across here. I have a negative here and a negative here. They combine to be a positive down here. Positive integral of secant theta minus integral of secant cubed theta. And fortunately, hopefully you remember the way to anti-differentiate secant theta. Uh, you multiply and divide by secant plus tangent to get natural log of absolute value of secant theta plus tan theta. So I've got the secant theta times tan theta plus natural log of secant theta plus tan theta, all integrated between, or all evaluated between inverse tan of 6 and inverse tan negative 6, minus integral from inverse tan negative 6 to inverse tan 6 of secant cubed theta d theta. Notice, I started with secant cubed theta, I ended with minus secant cubed theta d theta. Then I'm allowed to just add that to itself. I can just add this, add this negative integral here. I can add that to both sides so that this becomes a 2 integral secant cubed theta. So I get that just one of these integrals secant cubed theta d theta equals secant theta tan theta plus ln secant theta tan theta over 2. Right? If two of them equals this stuff, then one of them just equals this stuff over 2. Okay, so now I just have to plug in inverse tan of 6 and inverse tangent of negative 6 into these. Um, it's a little scary, but not as scary as it looks. Uh, obviously, tangent of inverse tan of 6 and tangent of inverse tan of negative 6 that is not the hard part, right? Tangent of inverse tan of 6 is just 6. Tanver tangent of inverse tangent of negative 6 is just negative 6, right? That's not the hard part. The weirder part is secant of inverse tangent of 6 and secant of inverse tangent of negative 6. And I'm going to use some geometry and trigonometry to figure out what secant of inverse tangent of positive 6 is. Notice I can draw a triangle with an angle theta such that tangent of that angle theta equals 6. Right? Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I've got a 6 here and a 1 here. 
Uh, using Pythagorean theorem, I figure out the hypotenuse must be square root of 37. Right? 6 squared plus 1 squared equals 37. Square root of that is square root of 37. And so looking again at this triangle, if theta is inverse tangent of 6, then secant of theta, that's always hypotenuse divided by adjacent. So that's going to get me square root of 37. So I get that the secant of the inverse tangent of 6 is square root of 37. Now I said tangent of inverse tangent of negative 6 is obviously negative 6. What about secant of inverse tangent of negative 6? I can't easily draw a triangle with a negative length, right? But I can use properties of even functions and odd functions to make this easy for me. I know that inverse tangent is an odd function. I know that if inverse tangent of 6 is some number, then inverse tangent of negative 6 is the negative of that number. I know that secant is an even function. If secant of some number is square root of 37, then secant of the negative of that number will also be positive square root of 37 because of even symmetry. And so I get that secant of inverse tangent of negative 6 is also square root of 37. So with these values of uh, tangent and secant of each of negative 6 and uh, or sorry, each of inverse tangent of 6 and inverse tangent of negative 6, I can just plug all of these into here. Notice my original integral was 1 half of secant cubed. So if, secant, if, if integral secant cubed is all this stuff over 2, then 1 half of integral secant cubed is all this stuff over 4. So I plug in these numbers, 6 times square root 37 plus ln of root 37 plus 6 minus negative 6 times root 37 minus ln of root 37 minus 6 all over 4. Uh, using a calculator, I did not do this calculation in my head, but using a calculator we get 19.49. Notice this is right in our range of somewhere between 18 and 24, so it agrees with our intuition. And so with all that trickery and juggling and all that, uh, that is how you solve the problem of arc length of a parabola. If you found this useful and like the way I explain things, if you want to arrange private lessons, click the link in the, in the, in the description. And until next time, this is Dr. Nighttime wishing you a good night.